Hey fellow zombie slayers, what's up? It's Robbie with Open World Games and we're talking all things open world zombie games, including but not limited to Dying Light, Dead Island 2, Human Element, and finally H1Z1. Now all of them have zombies, but what makes them different? What really sets them apart? That's what we're talking about today. And by the way, I'm gonna include a guide in the description so you can skip ahead to the zombie game you're most curious about. So check that description if you just wanna skip ahead to Dead Island 2 or whatever zombie game of your choice. So let's start out with Dying Light since we'll be seeing it ahead of the other zombie games. We'll be seeing it January 27th, 2015. That is extremely soon. And of course, I'm very, very excited for this game for obvious reasons. Now, Dying Light drops players in what looks to be a Brazilian-like environment, but this time it is littered with tons of zombies. Uh, day and nighttime will make a huge impact on gameplay. So gameplay mechanics will change from day to nighttime. You will be seeing tougher zombies at night and more docile zombies during the day. And also during the day, players will be tasked with heading to drop zones for supplies. And guess what? You're going to be having to treat yourself with medicine because you are infected. Now these drop zones are not just some regular zone in the game. They are dangerous. They are guarded by heavily armed survivors that will take you down. So they're gonna be a challenge to get around during the day. But again, nighttime is a whole other ball game because you will be coming across some extremely difficult zombies. They really do describe it as survival for the fittest. So it's gonna be seven minutes of absolute hell. Gonna be a blast surviving it. And this, my friends, is where parkour becomes extremely important because you are not going to wanna to stick around and fight the hordes of zombies at nighttime, you're gonna wanna run. And that's exactly what you're gonna do. Unlike Dead Island 2, parkour will have a huge role in Dying Light, so players can grapple to rooftops, leap over hordes of zombies, and what's even better, and this is the really awesome part, is all of this can be done in four player co-op. So let's drop in and drop out, and then also, get this, players can invade other players' worlds as a zombie. So you're at, you're in the middle of your game, it's nighttime, you're already freaked out, and then a player invades your game. You and your friends feel like you are screwed. It is time to run. That is just one scenario you can imagine for Dying Light. So yes, the game is very much an open world and is around three to five times larger than Dead Island and will provide about 30 to 40 hours of core gameplay experience. Now, I don't believe that includes the side mission, so this game is going to be absolutely huge. And by the way, this game offers a ton of weapon options. You will be able to craft your own weapons. You'll have a base weapon for each weapon, and then you can upgrade it several tiers, so there's gonna be a ton of options. I sat in on one of the live streams and I remember them saying it's about 127 weapons in total with multiple upgrade paths. So that is really, really good news, especially if you want replay value and a good, good loot system. So yes, what about Dead Island 2? We haven't heard much about it recently, but I'm telling you, it is being built in the background. Now, while Dying Light will feature a four-player co-op, Dead Island 2 will take it a step further and offer eight player co-op and competitive multiplayer seamlessly. So Dead Island 2 is being described as the world's smallest MMO. So just like an MMO, they want to keep players in Dead Island 2 around for a very, very long time. You may have heard that before. Think Destiny or even, you know, The Division. So they're gonna be offering extensive content throughout the life of the game. So for actual gameplay features, there's gonna be designated areas in the game where it's gonna get really difficult, and this was stated by the developers of the game. So this can mean that we will be seeing PvP zones much in the same way we see dark zones in The Division. Now Dead Island 2 is made by the guys that brought us Spec Ops The Line, so expect a pretty high quality game. I have very high hopes for this game. 
The setting is in the sunny hills of California near Hollywood and elsewhere, so expect bright and vibrant colors compared to Dying Light. And since it is Jaeger, uh, expect gunplay to be more prevalent and present and possibly more polished than Dying Light. So gunplay is probably going to be more on the forefront than Dying Light, but melee weapons, crafting, and all that good stuff is still there, much like Dying Light, so you can expect that as well. Now the devs say players will be fighting over resources in Dead Island 2, so survival may play a role in the game. Both games are getting extensive crafting mechanics, of course, co-op and open world and zombies. And Dead Island 2 will be receiving a beta in 2015 first to the PS4, and then 30 day later we'll be seeing it on the Xbox One and PC. Now if you want to sign up to this beta, I'm going to include a link in the description below so you guys can get to signing up and making sure that you are registered for news about the beta. So my question for you guys is, which one are you mostly excited for, Dead Island 2 or Dying Light? Now what about H1Z1? This was recently released in early access on PC. On Steam, you guys can find it on Steam, it's about $20. And then the premium ver version is about uh, $40, and it is early access. There's a warning message right there telling you that this game is not going to be complete. If you want a completed game, this is not for you. So that means bugs and glitches will be present. This is work in progress. However, the good news is this game can be ca compared to Daisy, which I know a lot of us just love Daisy. It has an extensive survival system under the hood, meaning you need to eat, drink, and rest in the game. The open world at this time is being built upon. It's constantly being improved and has, in my opinion, right now, it has a lot to be desired. I hope that they really flesh this out, give it more of a personality as the game goes on. Uh, weapons and crafting will be a part of the game and base building will also be a big part of the experience. So defending your turf, setting it up and getting friends involved is going to be a huge part of the fun. So the game offers a wide variety of servers, PvE, uh, PvP, and then also Battle Royale. There's plenty to do in this game, but there's also uh, drop crates that cost money. This game is not where you buy it and you are done. You may have to buy little crates throughout, so it's still being experimented with. It's very much an experiment. I can't give my firm opinion because it's early access. I think that's one of the reasons why they do early access is because, hey, they can't really be judged. They're constantly going to be changing it. So hopefully we see a firm final release in 2015, late 2015 or early 2016. That would be really nice because you know, I really don't like alpha testing or beta testing games, but for those of you that do enjoy that and do enjoy games like Daisy, you will definitely enjoy uh, H1Z1. It is now available once again as early access on the PC. You can find it on Steam, and then it will become available later on for the PS4. No word about Xbox One. I doubt it will become available to the Xbox One since it is Sony Online Entertainment. Okay, we haven't seen much from this one. It is called Human Element, and it is yet another exciting zombie-infested open-world title. Holy crap, there are a ton of them. I haven't even covered all of them in this video. Now, up to four or more players are tasked to survive in an open world in this one and take on other players' outposts in a variety of game modes. Co-op and PvP seem to be integrated within the game world and driving this time is going to be a big part of the experience and it's got a wide variety of talented people working on the project. I mean, people experienced with open world games, Call of Duty, so I really do expect the mechanics at the very least to be extremely solid and they've even got guys from Blizzard that have tons of experience with MMO, so I really do have high hopes for this one. Now, the good news is we have a rough estimate for the release date, which is around November 2015 for PS4, Xbox One, and PC. So it is definitely going to be a new gen experience. Uh, one more thing, driving and building up defenses for bases are very important in this game. So that's what it's really going to be about, is getting with your friends and defending your outposts from other players and then going on the attack. So look forward to more news about Human Element in the near future right here on Open World Games. 
And did you really think I forgot about the game that essentially started it all? Day Z. Now, we all know that this game is out early access on Steam. You can check it out, of course. But again, since it is early access, it is a constant work in progress, much like H1Z1. But man, it is really impressive. Now, Daisy Standalone is being worked on right now, and we are going to be seeing very important updates to that game uh, over the next year, up until fourth quarter 2015, around fall or the holidays, we will be getting the beta version of the Daisy Standalone. And they're gonna be adding tons of stuff to this game throughout the year, including basic vehicles, central economy, new renderers, new zombie AI, basic stealth systems, and then even diseases. Now, later on, they're gonna add advanced vehicles uh, commands, including repair, modifications, stuff like that, advanced animals, life cycles, and group behaviors, player statistics, and then they're gonna add a new user interface for stamina and fatigue, and then throw in dynamic events. Now, around quarter three of 2015, we're gonna be seeing traps, barricading, character lifespans plus soft skills, animal predators and birds, aerial transports, and then console prototyping. Now, fall will roll around in 2015, and it is going to be so crowded for gaming in general. They will be releasing their beta version of Daisy Standalone. This is really cool. You'll even be able to have your own animal companion, a dog or a horse. Talk about awesome. I mean, if you've seen The Walking Dead, you know of Rick and his horse in the beginning season. And then we have Steam Community Integration Achievements, stuff like that, and a lot more, as well as construction of buildings and shelters and walls and stuff like that. So it's looking like H1Z1 and DayZ are going head to head for 2015 from here on out. Let me know which one you guys are mostly excited for for H1Z1 versus Gates. So there you guys have it, the open world zombie games of the next year. Now there's gonna be more announced, of course, zombie games are always popular and the open world ones are even more so. So let me know in the comments below which one you are mostly excited for I cannot wait personally for Dying Light. I'm really, really excited to try out the parkour mechanics. I'm a huge fan of awesome parkour, uh, and it looks like it's offering a solid, solid experience. So that's really good news. So once again, guys, thank you so much for your support. I am so thankful for your comments, your shares, and your likes. Sharing and liking the video helps open world games a ton. You have no idea, so I really appreciate it. So see you guys later in the zombie apocalypse.